Hi everyone, I'm Irene O'Connor. Let's take a look at what was happening in Connecticut history today. One year ago today, on February 21st, 2021, hundreds of military veterans got their shot in the arm. Channel 3's Dennis Valera went to the clinic hosted by the VA hospital in West Haven. Let's go over what you're getting. You're getting the Pfizer vaccine. Commander Ray Essig has been waiting for this moment, getting his first dose. You're gonna do a little pinch. And the timing couldn't have been better. Really exciting because my mom's been waiting to get it. She's in her 70s and she just got it this morning, fine. Essig was one of more than 500 military veterans and essential workers to be inoculated at West Haven's VA hospital today. To attend, you needed to be enrolled in VA health care and 50 or older, able to deviate from state age restrictions since the VA gets their own dedicated supply from the federal government. So for us, our goal is to get as many vaccinated as possible. Since December 15th, the state's VA healthcare system has been hosting vaccination clinics. Right now, we're looking at trying to do that for 35,000 veterans in total, and we're about 42% of the way towards that goal. Essig is hoping all his fellow vets get vaccinated so they can continue to answer their call to serve. My reserve unit has been drilling um, virtual for the past almost year, and it's going to be great when everybody can finally get vaccinated so we can we can get back to doing what we need to do. Five years ago, a Waterbury landmark was vandalized. Channel 3's Matt McFarland reported the Holy Land Cross towering high above Waterbury had graffiti and a vulgar term. The bright green spray paint cuts quite the contrast on the towering white cross. When I came home last night, I saw the, the green at the bottom of the cross and it, and it really sticks out and shows. But for Bill Fitzpatrick, whether he sees it from far away or right up close, it leaves him with the same feeling. Uh, it's upsetting. Fitzpatrick is the volunteer coordinator with Holy Land. He noticed yesterday that vandals tagged both sides of the cross, including some stars, a pentagram, and some expletives. This will come off right away, and we're not going to give in to them. Okay? And there again, I still contend it's just a few people that are... A few kids, uh, nothing to do. They come up with a couple of cans of spray paint and they do it. I'm confident we're going to get them this time. That's because it's happened before. Bill says previously someone smashed two stone angel statues. And most recently, along with the cross, vandals ripped out a tree that was planted as part of an Eagle Scout project and broke a stone bench. Well, that just got broken uh, between Sunday and, and, and Monday. And then the statues were probably a couple of days after we finished the project. They came up and knocked. And you can see the stones are on the ground where they just took them and busted the statues there. Waterbury Mayor Neil O'Leary and a local businessman bought Holy Land in 2013. They put up this new cross that lights up, and volunteers have been cleaning and repairing the park bit by bit. And while the latest vandalism is frustrating, Fitzpatrick says they won't let the acts of a few ruin it for everyone. But he says adding cameras up towards the cross is something they'll consider. Right now, they're coming in from the Stone Street and Bergen Street entrances there. The front one, we have uh, there's seven cameras down there now. And most people don't come up that way because the signs are very intimidating. So we're going to put a couple of signs on those two entrances there, and hopefully that'll uh, keep take care of it. Ten years ago, new security cameras were being installed along Bristol's Veterans Memorial Park. One, two, three sets of eyes in the sky are keeping watch over Veterans Memorial Park in Bristol. City leaders are hoping these security cameras mounted on top of streetlights will help deter vandalism and catch those who try to damage the monuments. Ideally, you, you wish you didn't need those, but, uh, you know, um, you know, this is some of, this is a legacy for the city of Bristol. And, uh, you know, we, we don't want to see it tarnished and we want to preserve it. Mayor Art Ward is talking about incidents like this. In 2008, someone cut the legs of this bronze statue honoring the Spanish-American War. The damage was estimated at $10,000. Just to have that, that extra safety and maybe to have somebody think that they aren't going to do some vandalism because they're afraid they get, they're going to get caught. We caught up with Lisa Baker walking her dog at nearby Rockwell Park. Security cameras have already been up and running there since the city invested millions to fix it up and wanted to prevent vandalism. The mayor tells me it's already working. They've caught a couple people. Yes, they have. Yeah, so it, it is having a positive effect. And these three cameras are just the start. The city parks director says he wants to put in three more so that they can keep a good eye on the entire length of Memorial Boulevard and the park surrounding it. The video feed will be available for the police department and parks officials to monitor. Residents I spoke to today say if that helps get a clear picture of the vandals, they're all for it. There are cameras at the stoplights and the speed traps. I'm, I'm against that. That's a little bit too big brother for me. But uh, 
if you're just taking a walk or a jog in the public park, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. All six cameras are expected to be up and running within the next two weeks. In Bristol, Kim Lucy, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. That's this day in Connecticut history.